a small number of classified documents during his time as vice president in his former private office that happened last fall in November, they found it, as a matter of fact. The documents were discovered in a locked closet at the Penn Biden Center in Washington, and Biden appears to be cooperating with the National Archives, who referred the matter to the Justice Department for further investigation. Now, Republicans have seized on the revelations, but to be clear, there are distinctions between what we know about this and Donald Trump's hoarding of secret records at Mar-a-Lago. Here's what the president told CBS 60 Minutes back in September when asked about that. When you saw the photograph of the top secret documents laid out on the floor at Mar-a-Lago, what did you think to yourself looking at that image? How that could possibly happen, how one, anyone could be that irresponsible. So to start us off, we're going to bring in now CNN's senior legal affairs correspondent, Paula Reed. Paula, good morning. An unusual turn. How did this happen? Unusual indeed, Don. Good morning. Well, these materials were discovered by a lawyer for President Biden on November 2nd. We learned that they were in the process of closing out a Washington, D.C.-based office that Biden used when he worked as an honorary professor from about 2017 to 2019. Now, they say they uncovered fewer than a dozen classified documents at the office, but it's unclear what they pertain to or why they were in this office. Now, when these materials were discovered, the White House Counsel's Office notified the National Archives they took possession of the materials, we're told, the following morning. But Attorney General Merrick Garland, he has assigned the U.S. Attorney in Chicago to review this matter and conduct a damage assessment. Now, Don, it's interesting that he is one of only two current Trump holdover U.S. attorneys still serving. The other is the Delaware U.S. Attorney, who is leading an investigation into the president's son, Hunter Biden. Now, in a statement, Biden's attorney says they are cooperating with the archives and the Department of Justice. But there's a lot more we still need to know about how these materials ended up there, how certain they are that these are the only ones, and of course, how secure were these documents while they were in this office. Okay, so Paula, speaking of differences, can you lay out the differences between this and the Mar-a-Lago document issue? It's a great question, Don. So based on what Biden's team is saying, they are setting up some key differences from the Trump case. The first one is just the volume of materials that we're talking about. At this point, the Biden matter, we're dealing with less than a dozen documents versus the hundreds in the Trump case. Another big difference is cooperation. Biden's lawyers say they immediately cooperated, they turned over the documents they discovered, and that they continue to cooperate with the Justice Department. When it comes to Trump, there was months of back and forth where he refused and ignored the government requests and really only handed over many of the documents when subpoenas were obtained. The other big difference at this point is obstruction. Uh, Biden is not under investigation for potential obstruction. Trump is, as well as being under investigation for potential violations of the Espionage Act. So at this point, Mar-a-Lago appears to be a much more complex investigation, a more complex set of legal issues. But on the Biden matter, it's only come to light in the past 24 hours, and we'll continue to report it out. Mm -hmm. well, former President Trump is also under investigation for possibly mishandling that classified information. This is going to be politicized. I imagine it has already been politicized by those on the right and the former president. How is he reacting? Well, the former president, he posted on his Truth Social platform asking, quote, when is the FBI going to raid the many homes of Joe Biden, perhaps even the White House? These documents were definitely not declassified. Now, that term raid, that is a term that his legal team has been chastised by a federal judge for using because he is referring to a duly executed search warrant uh, that was carried out over the summer after information was obtained that documents were being moved. But interestingly, I spoke with a member of his legal team last night, and, and they think the Biden case actually helps their defense. They say, look, uh, this just illustrates the problem with overclassification in government. But they're also watching these two cases very closely. They're looking for any differences in the handling of the two probes. As they argue, the Justice Department has made the Mar-a-Lago matter more contentious than necessary. But, but we'll see. Again, we've been covering Mar-a-Lago for a lot longer. And Don, if it's one thing I've learned over the past seven years of covering various very high profile officials who, who may or may not have mishandled classified information, these things are never simple. Joining us is national security and security clearance law expert Bradley Moss. He is a deputy executive director of the James Madison Project. Bradley, good morning to you. Thank you. So um, you heard uh, Caitlin and, and Paula dis discussing this. You say 
that these are two completely different cases? Can you put that into context for us? What do you mean by that? Sure, Don, and Paula kind of teed it up a little bit there for me. The distinction here is not necessarily that there was the unauthorized retention of these documents. Even a single document is a potential criminal issue. Where the Biden team has diverged here, at least so far, based on what we know from the reporting, is the cooperation and the absence of obstruction in which they have engaged compared to what Donald Trump did. Remember, Donald Trump dragged it out for months to comply with NARA when the first batch of classified records were found. He fought, he fought NARA a bunch in terms of stuff being handled over to DOJ. Then they obstructed the subpoena. They provided the false sworn declaration, et cetera, et cetera, leading up to finally that search warrant execution at Mar-a-Lago in August. That is a clear distinction from what the Biden team here did. They found records. They immediately contact NARA. They turn them over the next morning in compliance with the protocols. That's what you're supposed to do. But one started as an investigation asking for the documents back, and the other one was discovered by the very person who had them, their own people, correct? There is a, that's a major distinction. That's also a separate distinction. Yes, absolutely, Don. And in the Espionage Act provision that a lot of us have always been uh, re referencing and that was referenced in the search warrant for Mar-a-Lago, one of the key issues is failure to return the unauthorized retained documents when confronted and sought um, from the authorized government party. That's what happened with Donald Trump. They asked for them back and he was obstructing and fighting them on it. That never happened here with Joe Biden. Now, obviously, if there's more documents to come out, if there are if there's evidence of obstruction that does ultimately emerge in the Biden case, that would be a different issue. But so far, it's completely apples to oranges here. OK, so is there any could he face any sort of consequences for having these these documents, even if he says he didn't know about them? Realistically, no. And by, by and large, for the most part, when it comes to unauthorized retention cases, the government doesn't like to bring criminal cases usually. It's very complicated. They have to have all kinds of classified discovery. It's usually an administrative uh, mechanism once they've secured the documents. Joe Biden is now the president. There's no administrative mechanism to take against him, just like there never would have been one against Donald Trump while he was president. He's exempt from all that. So the only way Joe Biden can really get in trouble here is if he or his staff on his behalf half obstruct the investigation. And so far, there doesn't appear to be any evidence of that. Gotcha. Bradley Moss.